Santum ego sacramentum, venere mucenui, et antiquum documentum, novo cedaritui, prestet fide supplementum, sensum defectui. <coughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh in the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant, we pray, that so as to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinance of God of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocaust and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and took it in, a large, in large bowls, and the other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all of these words of his. The word of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord? For all the good he has done for me, the cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you I will offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon, your, upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pray in the presence of all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, 
passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hand, that is, not belonging to this creation. He entered once and for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with the blood thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer ashes can sanctify those who are defiled, so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promise eternal life, eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when the sacrifice of the Passover, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off and entered the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, this is, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, on this uh, feast of uh, Corpus Christi, the feast of the body and blood of the Lord, it's, uh, it's a chance that the church gives us to just reflect on the glorious gift of the Eucharist to us, which is that, uh, it, and it's no ordinary gift, as if any of the church's sacraments or gifts were ordinary, but this we call the most blessed sacrament because all the other sacraments lead us to Christ and point to him, but the holy blessed Eucharist is Christ. So he is the most blessed sacrament. And uh, we are able to receive him in every holy mass. Now, I think that um, we, um, we want to uh, avoid any difficulties here, that uh, some of the polls that are taken show that even Catholics have a hard time really stating the true faith. Many people just think that the Eucharist is a sort of a symbol or a reminder of Christ, a reminder of the Last Supper or something. But I, I think that, again, we have got to once again emphasize that, no, uh, Jesus, uh, when he it says he took bread, he said the blessing, and he said, take this, this is my body, this is my blood. Now, it, it is true, as some claim, that, well, he also said, I'm the door, I'm the gate, I'm the vine, you know. You don't expect to go and sit in front of a, do adoration in front of a vine out, some, some vineyard somewhere, I get that. So uh, why do we take these words very literally, and uh, these others we see as allegories, like I'm the vine, for example, 
Well, first of all, because we've always taken these words literally. We, we, the church, the Catholic church is older than the scriptures. I mean, we're the ones who wrote it. <laughs> I mean, our, the first members of the church, the evangelists wrote these words down of Jesus. And um, we've always done it. But I would also say to you that if you want to just take a biblical argument, if you go to John chapter six, Jesus announces the Eucharist and he, he says, you remember about the manna in the wilderness and how Moses gave you that manna. And that manna sustained you uh, for 40 years in the desert. And without it, you would surely have died. Well, now I am that manna, that living bread come down from heaven for you to eat and not die. On your journey, not to some promised land on this planet, but to the great promised land of heaven. And the, I, will, I am now this food, I am this manna for you, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Many protested and said, this is silly, this talk is hard to endure. Who can take it seriously? How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And then Jesus says, I solemnly assure you, I'm not talking symbolically here. I know you're upset. I, he says, stop your murmuring. And then he goes on and he gets downright impolite. He changes from Greek words, the Greek verbs, from polite words for eating like phagein to trogon, a trogain, the idea of to gnaw. So he says, let me solemnly assure you, unless you gnaw on my flesh and devour my blood, you have no life in you. And then he left him that day, would no longer follow him. So you see, he had every possibility, several opportunities to disabuse them of the idea that he was just using an allegory or talking in symbolic terms, he meant what he said. And so essential is it for him to feed us that he's actually willing to lose some members in order to feed others. You see, we've, we've, we've got to, so, though, so I, I, even inside the scriptural tradition, we have a very clear indicator that the early Christians certainly knew and understood these words of Jesus in a very literal rather than an allegorical way. It, he's, not, this is, he, he's not the bread of life in the way he's the vine. That's, that, the vine is an allegory. Jesus is. He, the bread I will give is my flesh, is me. It is I for the life of the world. Now, um, as I say, Jesus had every chance to disabuse them of that notion, but he didn't. And uh, therefore, the early church took this teaching very seriously. All the earliest documents, like the Didache and uh, so many other groups, even, even Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he says, the, the, the bread that we break, is it not in fact a partaking of the body of Christ? The, the cup from which we drink, the chalice, is it not in fact uh, partaking of the blood of Christ? And then he goes on to say, he says, that we must receive, therefore, the body and blood of Christ worthily, for if we receive it unworthily, we are guilty of a sin against the body of the Lord. And so again, if it was not truly his body, how do you sin against his body by receiving it unworthily? Again, these are fundamental teachings that come to us from the church, from antiquity, and from the scriptures. And so today we, we want to confess this true faith that Christ is present in the Holy Eucharist, body, blood, soul, and divinity. He is really, truly, actually, substantially present in even the smallest part of the host or the smallest drop of the precious blood in the cup. He is present and active. It is, it is he. Only what we call the species or the accidents or the species remain. So to, the, to our senses, the, it still appears to be bread or tastes like bread or acts like bread or wine and so on, but it isn't. It isn't. It is now the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. Now, um, with all that in mind, um, I, I, I think that I'd like to also maybe go a little bit further with this. You see that this was something very precious that the Lord wanted to give us. We call it Holy Communion. Communion. And um, he wants this communion with us. Uh, he enters our body, if you will, and we also enter his and we become part of him and he of us, and, and uh, we, we become one together in this sharing of Holy Communion. Now, I want to develop that idea of communion in, more in a moment, but we'll just stay with the personal aspect for a minute. That Think about this. If you faithfully receive Holy Communion, you, spiritually you're certainly blessed, but even in terms of your body, you take and you assimilate 
into your very, you know, well, I'm, I'm a good example. I mean, you put food in your mouth and somehow the body's able to extract things and it becomes part of the very stuff you're made of. And <laughs> how much glory is there in the fact that Christ is quite literally part of our body and we receive Holy Communion. And likewise, we become part of him. We're taken into his body and we become one with him. That's why we call it Holy Communion. Now then, there's also this beautiful idea that um, Psalm, the psalm today from Mass, Psalm 116, asks a question. How can I ever make a return to the Lord for all the good he's done for me? I know, the cup of salvation I will take up and call upon the name of the Lord. Every time we hold up that chalice and holy mass, you see, we're giving perfect thanks. We call it the Holy Eucharist for this reason, the great thanksgiving, the great and holy thanksgiving. It's the Lord who took the bread and wine and gave thanks. Now, how can you and I ever really thank God for what he's done for us, you see? Well, we can't, but Jesus can on our behalf. And so we take the cup of salvation. We call on the name of the Lord. And so once again, even in the Old Testament, there was hints and things pointing forward about how this would be the way that God would ask us to give him thanks in days to come. You may also remember another ancient text in the scriptures that Melchizedek, the great high priest of Salem, offered bread and wine. This is long before the temple had been built and all the Jewish sacrifices were initiated. And Jesus has that priesthood in the order of Melchizedek. That's why he took bread and wine and these things were offered. But you see, they become, we, we, we with him offer these things to the Father. But once those words are spoken, we're not just offering ordinary bread and wine. We're offering the very Son of God back to the Father. Jesus offers himself to the Father. Head and members together in this great sacrifice of praise and obedience and love for the Father. And so we join our imperfect thanksgiving to the perfect thanksgiving of Jesus. And we properly thank God. Think, too, of the Eucharist as the last wish of a dying friend. You know, if you were walking with a friend across the street and some truck came barreling down the street, wasn't paying attention, your friend pushes you out of the way and bam, they get struck by the truck and they're thrown and you run over to see them and they're dying and they say, oh, how can I ever thank you for what you've done for me? Uh, you know, you saved my life and... That dying friend were to say, there's only one thing I ask. Do this, go to church every Sunday and remember me there at the altar. See, and isn't that what Jesus did? He was about to, did, he was about to die. And then one of the last things he said to them was, do this in memory of me. You know, if your friend asked you this, would you ever miss a Sunday? How could you? If you really had it in your heart, what he'd done for you. And Jesus has done more. He didn't just save us from some earthly trouble. He saved us from eternal trouble and opened up the gates of heaven. And he says, listen, just do this in memory of me. And so again, it's so sad today that less than 20% of Catholics go to mass. This great gift is given to us. And the wish of the Lord, do this in remembrance of me, is just lightly dismissed by so many. So we got a lot of work to do to bring people back. Now, a, a final thought about um, Holy Communion. Um, one of the things a lot of Catholics don't understand, <clears throat> and because they don't, it's come up a lot in the news lately. As you know, there's some talk among the bishops about um, whether and how we should give communion uh, to certain political figures and others who are in open defiance of well-known teachings of the church on life and sexuality and marriage. And so the question comes, can we continue to give them Holy Communion? Well, I think that the bishops are right and the way I understand they're going to approach this is, look, we don't want to just single out politicians. You know, there's a lot of people on a, any given Sunday morning that probably shouldn't come up to the altar just yet. Maybe a person's aware of mortal sin. They haven't been to confession. Uh, St. Paul says that we must eat. We must first of all discern the body of the Lord. And 
we must then examine ourselves and eat and drink worthily. For if we eat and drink the body and blood of the Lord unworthily, uh, we again bring condemnation upon ourselves. So not only do you not get a blessing, but you bring condemnation upon yourself. And out of love for those who are not able or worthy right now to receive Holy Communion, the church says, all right, stay back but let's get you to confession or let's resolve the problem as soon as we can because you've got to eat, you've got to receive the Lord. Now, I think if the bishops are going to do this, they should do this in a, this is about all of us. All of us need to examine ourselves. Now there's two things, it's not just sins that we might have committed, but here's the full formula. When a person is received into the Catholic Church from, they're already baptized, so they're in a Protestant or evangelical, uh, Pentecostal denomination. They've been baptized, but now they're going to be received into the church. We ask them to recite the following formula. I believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and professes to be revealed by God. Well, that's a mouthful when you really think about the meaning of all those words, and, uh, but yet that is really what every Catholic means when they come up and this is the body of Christ. It doesn't just mean amen, I believe it's the body of Christ, but rather I also believe everything else that the church teaches to be revealed by God. I believe it and I'm on board. And even if I'm struggling to live it, I'll at least call it a sin and get to confession. And so you start to see that dissent about serious teachings of the church, dogmas and solemn teachings is, is a way we don't have communion any longer with the church. Now, by the way, this is one of the reasons that we don't allow uh, Protestants, they say allow, but we don't invite Protestants forward, or non-Catholics, we'll say, to receive, because they're not ready to say they believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and professes to be revealed by God. And out of respect for that, we don't ask them to say something they're not ready to say. So it's a sign of respect. And it's a sign of respect to anybody. If you're not ready to say those words, don't feel forced to come forward, but let's see what we can do to resolve the problem. See? So I think if the bishops do come up with the document, it won't be anytime soon, but it isn't just about politicians. It's about some of us. It's about whether or not we're aware of any mortal sin, or even if it's not that, are we in open defiance of certain church teachings? Do we think that's just a bunch of hokum? Do we believe against it? These are the kinds of questions that we need to ask because communion means, communion not just me and Jesus alone, but Jesus has a body <laughs> and he has a head and he teaches. It's called the church. And we're in communion with his body, the church. And so communion means more than just, you know, me and Jesus are real cool. It means deep union with his whole body and all the members together, united in the truth that he teaches through his church. So. A final thought maybe, we need to try our very best to receive worthily, and I don't just mean here with regards to sin or being free of sin or these other things, but you know, sometimes we need to look a little bit at the way we dress when we come to church, the way we act, the way we behave. Um, do we prepare ourselves worthily? Is, uh, you, know, you know, again, do we refer, you know, take the Eucharistic fast? Do we sometimes, you know, as I say, sometimes we come up with We've been chewing gum or gosh knows what else. But again, what we want to do when we come to Holy Mass is to realize something powerful, wonderful, nothing, it, it's nothing like it in the world. It's the greatest thing on this side of heaven, the Holy Mass. And do we act like that? Do we behave that way? Do we come in and prayerfully dispose ourselves or do we just chatter away? And there's nothing wrong with good fellowship with people, but there's a time and a place. And, do we, are we quiet? Do we receive with reverence? If we receive on the hand, do we carefully put one hand under the other and reverently receive, not take, or just, you know, go like this? Or, uh, or if we receive in the tongue, do we reverently put our head back and the tongue comes out just a little over our lower lip and we receive, but are we receiving with devotion, with love? See, the Lord wants to feed us. This is no ordinary wafer or bread. This is Jesus our Lord, our Savior, and the great lover of our souls. And so it is, uh, I've gone on a little bit longer than I should for a taped mass, but bless you all for your patience and just say happy feast of the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. And I wanna say there's a great urgency now for people to get back to mass. If you possibly can, it's time. You cannot, cannot, cannot get Holy Communion on television.
or on YouTube. You just can't. You have to be here. You have to be in a church, a Catholic church. So I beg you to consider returning as soon as possible. If there are serious reasons, that's understood, but don't delay any longer than you have to because Jesus urgently wants to feed you with his body and blood. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and, was, and, became, and, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray, first of all, that all of us may always revere the holy body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ that we receive and partake of in holy communion, and that we may never miss a Sunday if possible, that we may be devoted to receiving him worthily and bringing others to the same glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for family, friends, and relatives, especially those who may have drifted from the church and the sacraments, for their return and that the Lord may feed them, and that they may remember that Jesus says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you'll have no life in you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also, Lord, for all those uh, today who are sick or suffering, that they are able to still continue receiving sacraments, including, uh, obviously, Holy Communion. We praise you and thank you also for uh, the glory that you draw from their sufferings for them. And finally, Lord, give them healing, grace, and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, also then for the souls of the faithful departed, that as this you promise them, that if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, I remain in you and you in me, and I will raise you on the last day. So please, Lord, raise them up to new life, to the glories of heaven, and one day to their bodies as well. We pray to the Lord. Praying also then, Lord, for all those other needs and intentions that are deep in our heart, we ask you to answer all of our prayers in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread that we offer you. Fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Spiritual militatis et contrito. Sushipa ti domine, seek sacrificium nostrum in conspecto tu hodie. Ut placia tibi, domini Deus, lava me domini ab iniquitate mea, et applicato meo, munda me. Please pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. <clears throat> Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we present here through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united in one bond of charity. And so as we approach the, the altar of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to heavenly realities here foreshadowed. And therefore all creatures of heaven and on earth sing a new song of adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Well, uh, if you're seeing this video a little early on Sunday morning, we're still planning then to, to, uh, to do a, a Corpus Christi procession in the neighborhood. So pray for us and help spread the word. And um, look forward to seeing many of you returning as soon as possible and knowing that the Lord wants to feed you <laughs> with his body and blood. Um, in case you didn't hear from last week's Mass, uh, our lector today and server, Josiah Rojas, who's a seminarian with us for the summer, he's studying for the Archdiocese of Washington. So keep praying for him, lift him up, and May the Lord preserve his vocation and get him ready to get ordained. Get, we, we get, a, get ordained early and quick. We need help. We need a lot of help. All right, good. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> O salutaris hostia, que celi pandis hostium, bella premun hostilia, darobu fer oxi.